I'm a part of the Society of Francisco Workers, and I run Timino's Catholic Worker, which works with queer street youth primarily. I was listening to our brothers, our brother out there, and he was talking about how President Obama is for straight marriage. I don't think he's read his newspaper lately. Just a couple days ago, the president is changing his mind now. And I would dare say that at least by election time, he will be on our side. And things are changing. And things are changing because they are right. The scripture this morning, the lectionary, had Jesus healing a, a, a paralytic, he had him forgiving him. And I believe that we are called in this fight to have our hearts open to forgiveness to our brothers and our sisters out there who have so much hatred towards us. Because in forgiveness, we can achieve equality. We can achieve oneness with one another, ultimately. Thank you. We have those signs all over the place. The Episcopal Church welcomes you. Well, we mean it. The Episcopal Church welcomes you. Prop 8 is about the freedom of religion. It's about an effort by the irreligious right to force us to all live by the way they read the Bible. And if you want to know how they read the Bible, just listen to the guy across the street. It's not the way we read the Bible in the Episcopal Church, and it's not the way most Californians read the Bible. So that's what we need to remember today, that most Californians are with us on this issue. I want my religious freedom back. I want to be able to live and work as an Episcopal priest as God calls me. I want my religious freedom back, don't you? My congregation, I am the only queer person, uh, but there's one other person um, who's been part of the community, and when I was hired, the search committee said to me, we don't discriminate. And then I said, I love this city of San Francisco. Marriage equality is a civil right. No minister, rabbi, or congregational leader has to marry people, of course they should, because it's a wonderful thing, that they don't want to marry. But what we're talking about is giving rights to people, because the government bestows upon heterosexual couples all sorts of rights that we don't get presently in our society as queer people who want to marry. And so for this reason, and for so many other reasons, we support this. Our community is a loving community. My congregants have gay friends. They have gay kids. They have lesbian cousins. They have lesbian aunts and uncles. We are a congregation that's about love. It's about support for one another. And during this Hanukkah Festival of Freedom, we call for the freedom of all to love and to make our world a better place through their love. God bless all of you. So I'm Teresa Rowe. And I'm Kristen Orr. And all we want for Christmas is a marriage license. Wouldn't that be great if the Ninth Circuit Court could settle this quickly and we could just get married in a few weeks? Some might doubt the possibility of same-sex marriage happening again soon, but we met six years ago in a conservative Christian church in Kalinga, California. <laughs> and a lot of people would find that impossible too. So we have faith that anything can happen. Speaking of faith, it is such a blessing to have so many supportive clergy here today. We want to give a shout out to our associate pastor of MCCSF, Jeff Burt. <laughs> Don't know where he is right now. Um, two years ago, there were circumstances in our lives that prevented us from planning a wedding, so we didn't get married. As a result of not being legally married, we have faced many obstacles, including discrimination in a Fresno hospital. And we are finished with being second-class citizens. As people of faith, we know that it won't be long before justice rolls down. That day when we can be proud of America for standing on the side of love. I would just like to say that about six months ago, I would not have been able to handle those people across the street, but my liberal queer church has drilled into my head again and again that my Jesus, my God, loves me no matter what. We want to encourage you to stand strong, keep on marching, keep on protesting, and remember that one day, soon, 
the fabulous sound of wedding bells will ring and we will get a taste of victory. And one more thing real quick. Why do we keep showing up? Why do we keep turning out? I was raised in Fresno, California, where I was taught that in my public school. I grew up in a conservative church where I was taught that. I then became a youth pastor in, this in that church where I taught that for a period of time. But in 2004, when I had come to realize within myself that I was gay but was never going to tell anyone, I was working my second job while being a youth pastor, but my second job was at a gas station. And every morning I'd grab the San Francisco Chronicle off the rack and secretly read it behind the counter and watch everything that was happening here in San Francisco. And it's what ultimately gave me the courage to come out. And somewhere today, there's someone listening to this and seeing all of us that's going to get the courage to come out. And that's why we need to keep on showing up. We need to keep showing up and we need to keep being loud and we need to keep educating that we are standing on the side of what's right that there will come a day when they will regret their actions. Thank you all for being here on this historic day. My name is Max Phil. I am co-president of my high school's Gay Straight Alliance, member of the Gay Straight Alliance Network Youth Council, and spokesperson for GSA Network's Make It Better project. In May 2008, when gay marriage was legalized in California, I, like many other Californians and queer people around the nation, was overjoyed. It meant that my lesbian aunt could marry her partner of 36 years. It meant that I, Max Phil, could someday marry. When the first Yes on 8 commercial aired on television, my stomach felt as if a knife had pierced its delicate young flesh. I felt like these people were attacking me. I took it as an insult. Sure, I was, and still am, many years away from getting married. But why? Why take my rights? Why spit on me? Throw me away and ruin my hopes and aspirations. Yet, when Proposition 8 actually passed on November 4th, 2008, the LGBT community's fire was only fed. Many people say, oh, well, don't LGBT people have civil union and domestic partnership rights? Yeah, hey, guys. That's good enough, isn't it? No. The LGBT community is being treated like a group of second-class citizens. This nation is supposed to be a free and equal nation. I, as a gay male, want to be equal. I want the freedom to marry. I want to be just as equal as the straight man, the straight woman, sitting next to me on guard. But I can't be, all because a man cannot marry a man, and a woman cannot marry a woman. Marriage equality and the high school bullying epidemic that has plagued our nation for decades go hand in hand. By making same-sex marriage illegal, we are teaching children in our schools that it is okay to put down a certain group of people. In this case, we are teaching our children that it is okay to bully LGBT youth. If we want to protect the lesbian, gay, bi bisexual, and transgender youth from being bullied, we need to ensure marriage equality. If the LGBT community is not treated equally in society, it is common sense that LGBT youth will not be treated equally in schools. We ask ourselves, why did Proposition 8 pass? The answer is simple, homophobia. Fear that gay people want to turn John Smith's second grade son gay. Fear that the LGBT community has a hidden agenda. I can tell you one thing, banning same-sex marriage is like legalizing homophobia. We can only hope that the judges inside this courthouse will make the right decision and stand up for the rights of queer folk and set a precedence that will roar across the nation and world for months years, and decades to come. Equality will not only bring rights to the LGBT community, but it will send a ripple through our youth who will learn to treat one another equally. You can do your part to make sure equal rights and equal freedom are achieved for all of us. Homophobia can end today. We can make it better now. And I want to give a shout out to my man right here, as well as the young brother from Sacramento who spoke earlier, because this is really about building youth power and youth pride. So please give it up for this speaker one more time, because this takes a lot of courage to be here. And I have a lot of love for all the GSAs all over the Bay Area. Um, so this is, we're out here early. 
Um, so I gotta say, let's do a little call and response. This is for the judges. This is for the people across the street. This is for ourselves too. What we're trying to do here. When I say wake, y'all say up, okay? Wake? Up. What do we need to do? We need to wake? Up. And we're for equality. When I say equality, y'all say now. Equality? Now. Equality? Now. We need to wake? Up. Y'all paying attention. That's why I like to hear that's a good crowd. We're here to wake up this justice building. We're here to wake up the whole city of San Francisco. And we're here to wake up ourselves. Uh, I want to tell just a very quick story. Um, I was going to, I want to say that um, my cousin, my 21-year-old cousin, uh, she lives in New York, and uh, she got married last year to her girlfriend, now her wife, um, and they had to go to Connecticut. They had to go to Connecticut because gay marriage is not legal in New York, so they went across the border to Connecticut. And when I first found out my cousin was getting married, um, there was a lot of there was a lot of, uh, in the family, you know, there's a lot of talk. Everyone's talking, what do you think about this? Do you think it's a good idea? And there were a lot of people who were against it. And the reason they were against it was not because it was a gay marriage. It was not because it was a lesbian marriage. It was because she was 21 years old. And no one was sure whether it mattered. They didn't care whether she was gay or straight. They worried whether she was 21. And that's the only thing that should matter. It shouldn't matter whether you're getting married to a lesbian or to a gay man, to a man or to a woman. It should matter whether this is the right person. So all her aunts, all her uncles, all her cousins were worrying, is this the right thing? But not because of anything with her orientation, but just because was she ready for this commitment, ready for this love, and it turns out she was. And she's been married two years now in a happy, beautiful marriage. So I gotta say, this is for my cousin, my cousin Naomi Brill, for all the young people. If you want to look at who voted against Prop 8, who voted for love, it was young people. The biggest group of people who voted against Prop 8 was young people. And so we know what's up. We're not deceived. We know what's going on. We know what's right. We know what's righteous. We're here with you. Thank you for having us. Power to the people, equality, and love. We are a people of great courage of amazing capability and a formidable will. We stand firmly in our beliefs to live a life with authenticity and autonomy. We have spent decades swimming upstream, going against the grain and facing turbulent winds. And in doing so, we have flexed the muscles of our hearts so that we may embrace differences with a little more maturity and compassion. We have built up the endurance in our spirit so that we may continue to encourage those who still foster fear because they themselves are in pain. And we have stretched ourselves beyond societal definitions, beyond stereotypical labels and preconceived notions until our thoughts became more supple, more encompassing, and more enfolding. We are more than an AIDS banner at a bus stop a quota for a human resources department. We are the queer, bisexual, trans, butch, stone, femme, gay, dyke, and same gender loving persons born of a human race. Yes. Equal in every facet, tenet, and creed. Yes, we are. We are the moms, dads, sisters, brothers, cousins, aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, and grandparents tied to our families, our histories, and our memories. Yes, we are. We are the students and company presidents, physically gifted and physically challenged, home builders and homeless, therapists and doctors, weaving a web of connectedness, cohesiveness, and collaboration. Yes, we are. We are from every city, every state, every nation, and every continent that exists on this planet. Yes, we are. We are a community where our history is long and our dedication to change unwavering. Desire for change has been the catalyst for every movement within a group, every shift within a culture, and every journey for each individual standing here now and throughout the globe. Without change, new ways of experiencing the world would not be possible. Change is the infant that is born from the courage to think differently. Change is the new leaf 
budding on a hundred year old oak tree. And change is what you and I need to usher here with open arms, even in the midst of fear. Thank you.